Praise the Lord. We're so thankful to come before you once more for all that the Lord is doing, what you continue to do on the first day of April 2021. So we're going to continue us to speak about the five stages of the growth in Christ. We finished talking about the new birth. We talked about uh, the new birth. We have talked about now we're going to talk about uh, the child, the stage of the child. What is, what do we need to be doing at this stage here? And how can we move from each stage to get to the next stage? But we have to understand each stage uh, that we're going through in our spiritual walk to grow. And it's important that we understand it. Well, that's why we we do dedicated this these Bible studies and Thursdays to finish off these stages. We can have a better understanding. We have a better knowledge. And God can give us the wisdom to understand the attributes of each stage. We'll be able to grow in the Lord. We're going to go ahead and go into Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 4. And we speaking of the child stage. And here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother which is the first command with a promise so that it may go well with you, that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not ex express your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instruction in the Lord. You see at this stage here, this is a learning stage where we have to be learning. We have to be growing in our understanding. We have to be growing in our knowledge. We have to be growing in our mindset. We don't want to fixed mindset, but we want a growth mindset. To be in this stage, we have to be growing. And mentally, we have to be growing. We we talked about in the last days, uh, uh, we were talking about the baby, how the baby has to feed on the word of God. The baby should desire the word of God. Now we're talking about the child state, where the child state, where the ba where the child has to begin to begin to learn, to understand, and to get instructed. In verse four, in verse four, it tells us that the fathers to bring up the child, to train them up in the instructions of the Lord. These fathers. Here in verse four, it could be your natural fathers, but it's also, it's a due application here. Fathers, it's the ministry, the ministry. You have to be under a ministry, a teaching ministry in order for you to be, um, to grow spiritually. You cannot be uh, somewhere where you're not getting instruction. Just like we go to school, we go to school to get educated. What I learned in kindergarten is not the same thing I'm gonna be learning in fifth grade. I learned to read and write in kindergarten. But when I get to the fifth grade, I start to understand how to speak properly, how to write 
proper sentence. I get to understand the construct of how to put a sentence to subject, right? I began to write um, um, book reports, but it's based on your grade level, the same way the child is a stage that you have to grow in, where you have to, the attribute is learning, learning the word of God, knowing how to apply. Also, by you learning how to apply it to your life, you were able to help others also when you're on this stage. When you see somebody, you're able to tell, you're able, you begin to know how to discern the right from the wrong through the word of God. Otherwise, fathers to train up in the instruction in the word of God, the instruction of the Lord is through the word of God, right? It's through the word of God. We get that in those instructions, right? those principles. We get those teachings, what is edifying, what is building us up spiritually in Christ. So that baby has to grow up into a child, All right? We have to grow up into the child. And a child, you know, when a toddler gets to that point, he wants to learn how to walk. He see his mom and his dad walking around. He begins to want to walk. He will try to get on his two feet, even though he can fall as many a time, he'll, he'll crawl, but he will do everything he can to, to walk. Everybody else is walking. Uh, he wants to do what he see his parents is doing. So this is an important state in your spiritual walk. When you begin to understand, when you begin to learn, you begin to get discernment, right? You begin to be able to get the word of God and to understand how can I apply it to each situation in my life, each situation in my life, I can use the word of God to apply it to, all right? The situation in our life. Um, let's look at another verse here. Proverbs, let's see here. Let's see. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. Right? Folly is in the heart of a child. Right? Folly is in the heart of a child. It has to be driven away by the rod. How, how is it going to be driven away? By the rod, that rod right is the word of God. It has to have the word of God. We have our ways of doing things, right? Our ways of understanding, but it's not necessarily the understanding. It's not necessarily the ways of the Lord. This because for me, it seems right. But when it's compared to the word of God, the word of God is that rock that's going to drive the folly, the things that is not of God. 
I will be able to understand the difference. I cannot just have my way, right? The Bible is an instruction. The Bible is an instruction. The Bible is an instruction. And what we should do on the way that we should go, right? It's not everything I'm reading. It's going to be uh, pleasing to me. When you read the word of God, not everything that you're going to be reading is going to be pleasing to you. But it's good for you, right? The word of God becomes that rod. It becomes to help you, right? It's there for the instruction of the spiritual life. The inner man, for it to grow, it has to feed on that word of God daily, like we said. That baby has to get the baby food every day. We have to receive the word of God, but in this state, not just receiving the word of God, but we have to begin to get to the point where we begin to understand what the word of God says. Understand it. Have knowledge of it in our lives. Right? We have to have knowledge of it. So the word of God can become a rod for us. And you know, just like that cross, it's cross God's will crossing my will. It's not about me, but this is all about Jesus Christ, the word. That's the word of God. And let's go Proverbs 22, verse 6. Say, start cheering off in the way they should go. Even when they are old, they shall not depart from it. Yes. We have to start off feeding on the word of God, learning about the word of God, even from that new birth, right? We coming into the introduction into the word of God that we have direction. We not just wandering off, not knowing where to go, but when we go into the word of God, we have direction. You see that word? Uh, uh, you're going to keep seeing it. Train up. Train up the child in the way that he should go. All right? We have direction. We are not wandering off. We are not just being uh, hasty. We are not in a hurry, all right? But it takes time to learn the word of God. It takes time to comprehend, just like in any um, subject, you have to apply yourself to learn that subject. The same with, with the word of God, you have to apply yourself to the word of God, you have to spend time. And what you do not understand, just like in a natural school, you ask questions. That's why I say the fathers have to train up and give instruction, right? You ask questions to the ministry. That's the purpose they're there for, to serve you to give you a better understanding of the word of God. And you will have to spend time in prayer. God, touch my mind. I'm not understanding. Even though I'm asking questions, I'm getting an answer, but I'm still not understanding the answer what I'm getting. How do I apply this to my life, oh Lord? I don't want to be confused. God does not a God of confusion, but he's a God of order. All right? The more you apply yourself, the more God will open up your mind. Your mind is your heart. Your heart. God will begin to 
show you things. He'll give you truths, what we call revelation. You'll be sitting there in an assembly under a, a teaching ministry and you, God suddenly just touch your mind and open up your eyes of your understanding and you receive that revelation of the word. You've probably been reading that verse a hundred times and God just illuminated to you like that. What's the help of the Holy Ghost in your life? God illuminate you. All right, God touch your mind. As a child of God, we want God to be touching our mind to open up our understanding, all right? To receive the knowledge that we need to receive that's edifying, that's building us up, causing us to be able to get up on our two feet and walk for ourselves as a child, right? Well, we don't have to be wavering back and forth well, we confuse, but we know exactly where we're going, right? And it say, and when they are old, they will not turn from it, right? We will stay on that path, no matter what, right? No matter what, right? We, once you get the word of God, living in the inside of you and you become a part of the word of God, no matter what no one says, you're not gonna, no one is gonna cause you to lose your place in God. No one, even yourself, you're not gonna allow yourself to be deceive. You will move from the follies, the traditions, the way of your old thinking, and you'll begin to have the mind of Christ, but you need the word of God. You have to um, have a clear understanding of what the word of God is saying, day by day, little by little. A little here and then a little there. Precepts on precepts. You'll begin to understand. All right? But you have to apply yourself. You have to spend time to study yourself. Approve of God. And knowing how to righteously divide the word of God. It's like James said, you don't go into the mirror and look at yourself. And when you leave the mirror, you forget how you look. The word of God is that mirror. It's there to help us, to edify us, to build us up, to get us where we need to be in the Lord. Right? We need the word of God to help us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, it says, but has for you, Paul was talking to Timothy. The apostle Paul was talking to Timothy, letting him know, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know the, those from whom you have learned it, right? You tell them, continue in what you have learned. This is your learning stage. Not just learning the word of God, discerning the right from the wrong, but you got to come to a point where you are fully convicted by the word of God. I'm not going to stop doing something if I'm not fully convicted. 
That is not right. As long as I'm not convicted, I, I have a tendency to go back to it again. Old habits, old ways, old mind, old thinking, whole mindset, right? We got to become convinced of what are we reading? It's becoming a part of me. I'm applying it to my life. The word of God becoming alive in me. When others see me, they don't just see the old me, but they begin to see a new creature. Right? The people are more focused on the outer appearance. What do they see? Your attitude has changed. The way you talk has changed. Your mannerism has changed, right? People, that's what they look in. When they look at you, they're always looking at the out of appearance. Those things, the word of God can affect them. But we have to learn the word of God. We have to learn how to work on ourselves. It's like when you go into that mirror, you go in there to wash your face, to brush your teeth. It's not easy to do when you don't use that mirror. But you need that mirror there. That's what the word of God, it's a mirror that you look at daily. Have I gone off track? I'll say to see if I'm still in the faith. Am I still holding on? You're gonna need the word of God to fortify yourself, to build yourself up. You don't always gonna have people around you, but when you begin to learn the word of God, you know how to go in there for yourself. To edify, to encourage, to build up yourself, to cause you to press on, to move on. Not to get stuck in the mud, but to keep going on, right? Not to get caught up in the things of this life, but to know that you are different, but you got to be fully convicted. But you have to learn the word of God. It has to become substance in your life. It has to become the most important thing in your life. Right, that's what's going to help you to press on to that higher mark. You don't want to stay the same, but you want to continuously grow and change for the better, not for the worse. That's why we say 21 is, is going to be better because we are drawing closer to the Lord. And one of these ways we are drawing closer to the Lord is learning more about the Lord. And how you're going to learn more about the Lord is through his words. Through his words. Understand what his words are saying to you. This is a, this is a personal the letter that the fathers have written to his children. Genesis to Revelation. They were each and every book, each and every verse is inspired by the Lord for you to grow in him. God does not want us to remain the tail, but he wants us to become the head. We have to learn these things. Or we're going to end up being deceived. Oh, we're going to end up being blindsided. The Bible said that the devil is a roaring lion and he goes around to devour who he can. That's those he can devour, those that are not equipped 
with the word of God. They are easily persuaded. They see a crowd doing something and they want to follow that crowd. When, we, when the word of God tell us, we do not follow the crowd to do evil. But you have to learn these things. You have to get knowledge of it. You have to spend time in the word of God to know this. Even though we are part of this world, we, even though we are in this world, but we are not a part of it. We do not entangle ourselves with the things of this world. Certain questions you won't even need to ask. You will know for yourself by spending time in the word of God. Should I have unforgiveness in my heart? <laughs> Through the word of God, you learn in the word of God, you know you cannot have this growing in your heart that it needs to be get ridden of. Should I have hate for any group? Mm -mm. That's not the love of God. The Bible tells you that he reigned on the good, on the just and the unjust. He's no respecter of person. Whomsoever will, God is in the saving business. And if you un understand that, you will begin to understand that you are ambassadors for him. You are representative for him. Wherever you are at in school, at your job, in the store, you represented him. And we cannot represent him the way he wants us to represent him if we do not understand the word of God. We're not learning, we're not getting instruction, right? We cause ourselves to have lack. When you read, you'll find out the Bible don't want us to have lack but he want us to have more than enough. He call us, calls us to be more than conquerors. He calls us to be victorious. How can I live a victorious life? I have to spend time in the word of God to learn this. All right, it's all there in the word of God. How can I be uh, financially prosperous is in the word of God. How can I be successful? It's in the word of God. So we have to be fully convict of what we're doing and what we're saying. I'm so thankful for the day. So let's close out in prayer. Thank you, O Lord God. Let thy will to be done continue to touch us and guide us, O oh Lord. Praise be to you. Y'all be blessed. Hope this is edifying. Built you.